Hello. Oh, hey, Liz. You alright? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, hi. So, as you probably saw, we are playing Monster Prom. I have always wanted to play this game, and I realized I owned it because they, it was, like, free on Amazon Prime at one point. And... I, I want to date some cute monsters. <laughs> Don't judge me. I, I just I just think they're kind of cute, you know? Uh, but yeah, how are you doing? Um, I'm just checking a few things, and I'm gonna pop over to the game, so... Oh, I'm excited for this. Definitely thought that said monster porn. Oh, hold up. D did I write it wrong? Okay, thank god I didn't. <laughs> like, please don't leave just because it's not porn lips. <laughs> I don't know how, what this game's like. It might be anyway. You, you might get exactly what you came here for. <laughs> uh, I don't know, yeah. With that, I'm gonna pop the game on the screen now as well. <laughs> Boom. Oh, it's multiplayer. There's two terms, nice. Full game. Ah, spooky high school. The, the schooliest years of our lives. Back then we were young and unafraid. <laughs> no, I'm just dumb. No, no Liz, you're smart. I, I, don't worry, I'm also very dumb. Uh, <laughs> we stand dumb bitch energy over here. <laughs> sometimes reckless, sometimes brilliant, just, sometimes just stupid, but always willing to live life to the fullest. We were on a wild journey to discover who we really were. Who are you? Ooh. Get to pick which cute monster I am too. I wasn't prepared for this. Um, between this guy, who's like just the void, and the jock. Hmm. I kind of like the void because that most represents my understanding of gender in this world. My name. Is my parents love me. <laughs> oh, it has a pronoun switcher. I love that. Oh, hey, sunset. Welcome to the screen. Yeah, monster prom. I I realized I owned it from like a when Prime Gaming was giving it away, and I've never played it. I'm really excited. The fact that they have a pronoun choice and stuff. This is already the best game. I want to date some cute monsters as well, so this is going to be amazing. Yeah, you know, we had the most... And yet, we we had yet to experience the ultimate challenge, the monster prom. Ooh. Okay, them pronouns. Yes, we stand. I remember it clearly. Six weeks were left, and as we fantasized about our dream prom dates, we were all scrambling to catch the attention of one of our six most charismatic classmates. <laughs> the awful accent one? Okay, uh, Liz, do you want to pick an accent, or do I just have to come up with one? I don't know what it says on the thing. <laughs> also, how long do I have to do it? <laughs> Read the captions in an Australian accent. Alright. <laughs> yeah. Uh... Uh, which one do you like the most, mate? Uh, I don't know, Sunset. I'm not quite sure. Uh, <laughs> as we fantasize about our- oh wait, I read that one, didn't I? Uh, <laughs> Miranda Vandavit. Damien LaVey. A fearless demon with a sense for destruction and a love of fire. Scott Howell. Uh, where, where, <laughs> wolf, 
halfling who compensated for his rather small brain with a stupidly hot, huge heart. Liz, why, why are you shook? Is it that bad? <laughs> Would you believe that half my family live in Australia? <laughs> uh... Liam de Lioncourt, 4XX, a hipster vampire whose standoffish demeanor hid that he was truly a lovable dork, and Polly Geist, a party ghost of an insatiable hunger for the, all the wrong things, and Vera Oberlin, a mean self-made gorgon, with a merciless sense of business. Uh, <laughs> it was clear. It had to be one of them. But who? We only had six weeks to choose our prom date. And even more daunting, we only had six weeks to woo them and conquer their art. But as I already said, we were young and unafraid. And we were ready to start. <laughs> Liz says you could stop whenever you feel, but it's pretty good. Oh, thank you. I I thought it was free shit. <laughs> I see there's also an Aussie chalky clip now. Uh, fair enough. Um, I always try and I I said on the thing apparently it's got to be at least five minute five minutes. So we'll see. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Might just do it till I get bored. Or or if you guys find it kind of annoying. I don't know. Welcome to Monster Prom stupidest pop quiz ever. Also, I don't know which one I like. Uh Mine's run in we're running so many different ways. Or no more. We're now using our PhD in bullshit. To diagnose which kind of deviant sicko you are. What's the problem? Stupidest quiz, stupidest pop quiz ever. You'll throw a bunch of absurd questions at you, at you, and turn your answers into into your character stats. Oh, that that's kind of cool. This way, each of you will start by having stats that better reflect your true selves. Let's start. I feel like with this accent, I need to just say, like, Cleo, and go, like, jump in the sea, and talk about Mako. And yeah, this is such a cool, uh, character creator. It's your chance to fix global warming, go ahead. It's time to be a real hero, I'll lead a mission to the sun in order to invite the sun to the party of its life. We'll have so many hilarious misadventures that the sun will eventually become cooler. Nah, the world is doomed, but I'll start investing in ships and start a profitable business for the soon to be covered by water world. And global warming isn't real, I invented it and now science is claiming authorship because science is a lame copycat with no original ideas. <laughs> uh, I think I'd be friends with the sun, you know, with my cool Australian accent. We go to the, we go put the sun out there with a barbie and... Have a great time. Get to promote, produce a movie. It's based on the most influential Russian novelist of the. Nineteenth century? <laughs> have gone nuts. They don't remember anything about last night. And now they can't find the manuscript of the brothers Karmazov. And Dostoevsky has to deliver it today. Something about superheroes. But with a love triangle between a beautiful yet somewhat relatable girl. Maybe she's always stating that she's a mess. 
and two of the super hot superheroes, which are also like vampires or pirates or both. Instant it. Lesson Dostoy Dostoyevsky? Who's Dostoyevsky then? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> two guys walking away from rad explosions. And they don't look at the explosions. They don't give a fuck about the explosions. They reflect on life and love. But it's super dope and kick-ass. They do so... Uh, super dope and kick-ass because they do so walking away from never-ending explosions. <laughs> uh, ooh. I don't know which one I like most, you know? Uh, I'm between... Hot superheroes and explosions. You wrote crime and punishment. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Uh, I think I'm kind of vibing with explosions. I think Cleo would like a good explosion. What criteria would you use to name your children? My name, the second. Well, they might be another mistake, so. It, it would probably be quite fitting, you know? Uh, something simple and friendly, like Bobby or Mary. No name, it's too much work. Research a name that is pun proof and joke proof, no one will pick on them. Swear word. A non heteronormative name to give them freedom to define themselves on their own terms. I think mistake for second. <laughs> Let me know if this accent thing's getting annoying, by the way. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Alright, uh... I don't know where's a good place to go. You know where people always, first thing in the morning, meet their best friends? Hey, Moss, welcome to the stream. Uh, Liz redeemed the awful accent challenge, so I am... Um, Aussie Chucky for up until the point where you guys tell me it's annoying, honestly. Uh, I hope you're having a good time. <laughs> We're dating monsters, so you know how it is. Um, apparently I'm smart, bold, creative, charming. No, I'm not charming <laughs> or creative. Uh, but I'm fun, and I got some money, so we're, we're fine. Uh, I think if you want to find hot people at the beginning of the day, they, like, go in the bathrooms. I skip class and just hang out in the bathrooms, because I respect no authority. Some people just want to watch the world burn. By skipping class and hanging out in the bathrooms, I gain... <laughs> I give zero shits, but I gain... Two boldness. Out of the corner of your eye, you spot Scott and Miranda staring intently at the seahorse. <clears throat> this looks like a killer seahorse, Mary. What are you so worried about? Well, you see, some of my daddy's subjects gave me this horse as a gift. And, well, you've heard what they say, haven't you? Don't look a gift horse in the mouth. I really hope the accents aren't annoying. <laughs> What? Who are they? Why do they say that? What's in there? I don't know. That is why I'm so distraught. I am terrified they will accidentally look into this gift horse's mouth and see- See what? Gross butt? A number tiny horse? A world without sports? I don't know, and I don't want to find out. Ah, uh, come on, Mary. You gotta find out. You gotta find out for... What's that thing Miss Feveratu is always saying? Science? Yeah! For science! You got it, right? You realize Scott is looking to you for your opinion? They both are? What do you think Miranda should do? Don't ever look that gift horse in the mouth. In fact, breed it with sea urchins to produce gift horses. With tiny mouths! Look that gift horse right in its damn mouth! They say not to only because they don't want you finding all the delicious mouth candy. What do people think I should do? I think this will depend which one thinks I'm cute. 
they're both kind of cute, and my bisexual heart has kind of melted. So uh, I think that you guys should give me some feedback. The, this accent bit is going on too long, isn't it? <laughs> mm. I kind of like the tiny mouse thing, so unless anyone objects, I think make some tiny, tiny gift horses with tiny mouths. I think that'd be kind of adorable. <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, Tiny Mouse. Miranda is clearly pleased by your suggestion. When you run into her the next day, all her previous anxieties will be gone. I took your marvelous suggestion to the logical next level. I had my father's genetic wish that combined my gift horse with a sea urchin. Whatever horrible things lurking between those horse lips. They're now too tiny for me to see it. The horse is a little spiny now, but I think that just adds to his charm. It's so cute. I can tell he loves it because of the deeply pained expression in his watery eyes. That works so well. You wonder why you don't solve all your problems with genetic ma manipulation. You gain plus two creativity and plus one smarts. Oh, that, that's pretty nice. Moon. Oh, there's so many cute people at the tables. So, where do I sit for lunch? Oh no. Oops. Uh. <laughs> okay, I think what I'm gonna do is... The bits where it says narrator specifically... I will read in the Aussie accent from now on, just so it doesn't get too annoying. I don't want to annoy people. <laughs> and of course, if someone else redeems the awful accent thing, we can change the accent. So, if anyone has enough points to, <laughs> the narrator can become a different one. Um, ooh. Like, she's cute. Also, look, there is the devil over there. And the werewolf. Cat in the middle is a shop. Ooh. Is the cat... Would you say the shop's worth going to this early on? Like... Buy items to increase your stats. Okay. So maybe I can increase my charm. But I think I'm gonna stay over here. I keep slipping back into the fucking accent. Hmm. I think what I'm gonna do for now is I'm gonna stay over here. I might go to the cat next lunchtime. So the ones you wanna be in if you're going for the prom quick. I like the werewolf and the devil guy, but also the cute little mermaid girl we talked to. My my bisexual heart cannot decide this. I don't know what to do. <laughs> this is breaking me. <laughs> Scott and Damien. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, you just said ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Find Scott and Damien shoveling hot dogs. And mash potatoes into their mouths while coach cheers them on. Go boys, go! March your way to victory! Ah, there is no such truer sport than an eating contest! Dense crunch. This is... This is... Took me a minute to work out what it, why it was written so much. Looks, it's, looks like it's a pretty fair fight so far. But where's the fun in that? Time to step in and take the balance. Oh, distracting him with fireworks would be mean though. I guess we're doing the catch up. Now which one would you want to be in? 
I guess I'm picking the werewolf then, because I think that it would be mean to throw fireworks at a part dog human, you know? That's just mean. Like, no. <laughs> you pull out your bottle of Brother Caliente's father, son, and the Holy Ghost pepper ketchup and dump it on Damien's dogs. See, I thought that was a good thing because I love to slaver on some at the barbie. <laughs> mm, yeah, finally a sauce hot enough for- Oh fuck, my soul is melting! Power through, Damien. The heat you're feeling is just the fires of determination. No fire I can handle. This catch was fucking consecrated. I'm having an allergic reaction. Allergic reactions are just weakness leaving the body, Damien. Keep it up. I'm pretty sure there's a wrong in Damien vs. Vice quit. Coach, I quit. Well, I guess that makes Scott the winner. Congratulations, Scott. Right. I love winning. Great. Oh, wait. Hey. Now will someone take me to the nurse's office? Hey! I love helping! Scott rushes off carrying Damon's smoking body, and you rush in a little closer to Scott's heart. That was so mean though! Oh no! We gave him consecrated ketchup! <laughs> we just fucking exercised the demon with ketchup? I should have done the other one! <laughs> <laughs> hmm. There's a stadium. But I can't go to the stadium. There is a gym, though. I think that the werewolf be at the gym. I just killed Damien. No! <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> All I did was give him ketchup. It's not my fault that my. The mistake as a character is that fucking evil. <laughs> God. <No>. Oh, <laughs> is that the TFO two guys? Hogjanir. <laughs> oh my god. That day, an epic dodge roll, dodge roll max tape match takes place. The ring seems lost, but you deliver an inspirational speech that fuels your team spirit, leading to a spectacular comeback. You're clearly a death. You're clearly cl clear clear. Bleh. I don't know how Australian people say clearly. <laughs> You're clearly a natural born leader. You gain plus two charm. Yes, charm was the one I was low on. After all that, you decide to get. Look for a spot outside the school to get some good sunbathing. But you fail to focus on your sunbathing since you see Scott and Miranda deep in conversation. <laughs> it's the two cute ones again that I haven't nearly killed. <laughs> Moss, don't call me out! No! <laughs> Just got messages in the chat. Leon, you killed someone again. I left for five minutes. I didn't mean to! <laughs> No, it wasn't holy water, even worse, it was holy ketchup. But to be fair, to be fair, the prompt said, distract with fireworks, or slaver hot dogs with ketchup. I thought it would be mean to throw fireworks at Scott because he's a dog and he has sensitive ears and everything. Well, so I just call him a dog, that's mean. Uh, he's a werewolf and they're sensitive to sound. But... The alternative was ketchup, but then it said it was holy ketchup and it was consecrated. <laughs> we do not talk of the holy sauce. <laughs> but yeah, and then he started having like an allergic reaction and got carried away. So I think I killed Damien. Even though he was cute, yeah. <laughs> it's a sports game thing, Miranda. I think I'm a good boy, but there's something that gets me growling when I see that opposing team. Oh, Scott, believe me, I understand better than you may think. It's already how I feel about those horrendous air people. Air people? Yes, Scott. 
obviously the air people. I know I've told you about them before. They're the sworn enemy of the mer people, and they must all be destroyed if they refuse to accept our superiority. Oh wow! All of them? That sounds really hard. I hope people like my character voices, by the way. Um, <laughs> let me know if the audio is too loud as well, <laughs> or anything. Uh, <laughs> it will be. They're a horrible, ruthless nation of feathery socialists who refuse to bend a knee no matter how many times my father invades. They don't like guacamole, Scott. They eat the crust off their peanut butter and jelly. Got to love when someone just like opens your door to ask if you want things, and you're just like, "Fuck!" They eat the crust of their peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. They wear socks with sandals. Socks with sandals and fanny packs. Oh man, that's a pretty scary enemy, Miranda. What are the Mer people gonna do about it? That's a great question, Scott. We tried reasoning with them through bombs. Chemical warfare and torture, but they're entirely unreceptive. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> and thanks, Sunset. I'm glad you like the voice acting. <laughs> hmm. It's really weird that they couldn't sway the air uh, people. But maybe you can step in and help? Scott and Miranda are probably a different takes. So. Think about hard about what you pitch. I love Miranda, but that's so <laughs> Reach a truce, use your great cheerleading to put an end to the feud. Or wipe them out, make the air kingdom the mer kingdom by flooding the entire sky. <laughs> also, I love how Moss is still freaking out about the holy ketchup. <laughs> yeah, it was holy ketchup. It was consecrated father and son and holy spirit ketchup, apparently. <laughs> also, can we appreciate my mug for a second? Well... I'm just taking a second to drink. It's Moomin! I think... I killed Scott's competition, so I might as well try and date Scott now. I feel like cuter together than with someone else. Legit, these two are so cute! You've got the himbo, and like, the popular girl. Ah, oh, I ship them. But also, the himbo's mine. <laughs> What? Yes! You're a genius! Cheerleading is always the answer! Oh my god, he's a cheerleader. That's even better. He is the ultimate himbo. No, I just moved a thing. Shh. Sky, I appreciate you, but peace is the answer with those hideous air people. That was the line. Thank you, stream delay. <laughs> also, how do you two plan to put an end to a feud that has existed for cheer centuries just by cheerleading? Like this! One, two, Three! Hey, our people! Just end this war! <laughs> Five, six, seven, eight! Reaching people would be really great! <laughs> Nine, ten, twelve, thirteen! Remember, always use sunscreen! <laughs> you decide not to point out you forgot eleven. Just missing one number is quite good, boy. Like, quite good by <laughs> lovely Scott standards. <laughs> quite good, boy. He's a good boy, okay? I agree, Sunset. He is a sweetie. Also, like, this stream's probably gonna be long enough. It said the game's, like, an hour long, so we can probably do this, and then second term, and then come back to whichever one we had the cutest second character that we didn't date. <laughs> so I'm excited. Scott, this is useless. Trying to negotiate with the air people is never an option. But then a slip of, the pa a slip of paper falls from the sky. Miranda picks up and reads it. And, yeah, Moss, I love Moomin. We've got, like, a whole load of these Moomin mugs at home. There's, like, this one, and it's got a, um, different Moomin on the back. I think that might be Moomin Mama. And they're amazing. I'm glad you like it. <laughs> Dear Scott, I really liked your cheerleading. Keep being this cheerful. Sincerely, the sun. The sun. <laughs> Is that meant to be like the fucking newspaper? 
Or is it the actual sun? That's the real question here. Hooray! This has nothing to do with our feud, Scott. <laughs> I just, I guess I should seek more advice from someone else. Have a nice day. <laughs> and yeah, we should chat about Moomin. Moomin's wholesome. I love Moomin. My mom's terrified of Hathney. Hattie Fatners, though, and I find it hilarious. Because they're really cute to me. Thanks. Mistake? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hmm. She might be right. But I won't ever stop cheerleading. Thanks, Mistake. Thanks, son. <laughs> but then you spot some in. <laughs> Good one, Polly. He totally thinks he's friends with the sun now. We can mess with his head big time. Ooh, one sec. Sorry about that, had to just quickly fix something. It's mostly friends, it's friends of the sun now. We can mess with his head big time. Oh, is she like a wind person? Medusa lady has the same face as Undale from Und Undyne from Undertale. <laughs> True. Right. Also, I don't want to be the big guy to feel like his cheerleading was useless. As annoying it can be sometimes, he like, doesn't deserve to be sad. You know what? I agree. Oh, it was Vera and Polly once again messing with people's heads. But you know what? Scott is happy and he thinks your idea worked. So good enough. You gain plus two fun and plus one creativity. Crea creativity. I don't know why I'm still doing the narrator as an Aussie, it just... <laughs> We're moving with it, you know? Does anyone have any particular places in the school ground they want me to go? Looks like if I go to class I can buy things, but who goes to class? I guess I'd raise my smarts, but right now I need money and... I don't know which of these is meant to be charm. Hmm. <laughs> They're cousins. Undyne and her. Oh, I love that idea. Hmm. I feel like... I want to go outdoors. That day during recess, you start a half hour raid that goes full crazy. You have no idea how it escalates so much, but at one point there are like 300 people. Someone summons demons from a nightmare dimension. Get the ketchup! Get the fucking ketchup, guys! The consequences might distort the fabric of reality itself, but who cares? It's a rad pie. Also, sunset to roast my dad. <laughs> You're getting plus two fun. Ah, I'm the most fun now. As you go about your day, you can't help but notice Damien and Scott trying on beige business suits. By the time you get over them, they've both taken off the suits and examined them critically. <gasps> Damien's alive! We didn't kill him! <laughs> hmm. Something isn't right. Yeah, I really don't want to have ass our Pokemon Scott's play. Coach says you always use your full ass on everything. I'm with you, man. Nobody gives more of a shit about the classic Pocket Humans video game than me. But what the fuck are we missing, man? We got the suits, horn rimmed glasses, the sickly pale body paint. Everything we need to cosplay Dark and Wilbur. And Twin Titans of real estate. 
I know who they are, Scott. I played the damn game. Now come on, help me think of why we're missing. You're right, what that costumes need. You reach into your bag and pull out the one thing no human would be caught dead about. <laughs> a unicycle or a gun? Guys, do we have a unicycle or a gun? Uh <laughs> Sunset very excitedly says a gun, and uh, Moss says a unicycle, and I don't know. Uh, Liz, if you're still here, help. Unicycle or gun? America or in the UK? Because we're all clowns over here, or they have guns. Violence is not the answer. It's a question, and I say yes. Uh. Okay, you know what? Let's do true England fashion. Unicycle. A unicycle? Seriously? What kind of freak show bullshit is this? <gasps> this is the best thing I've ever seen. Oh, come on, Scott. Doug and Wilbert would never ride a unicycle. Well, maybe they should, Damien. Maybe they should. <laughs> Look. Everybody's gonna be everybody's gonna be doing a Doug and Wilbert, but only we will be doing a Doug and Wilbert on a unicycle. So did you just say Super Meat Boy is Damien? Huh? I guess it is a good excuse to run over people's toes. Okay, unicycle it is. Okay, unicycle it is. I forgot he's American. You can't believe that worked. You were just trying to get rid of your cousin's shitty unicycle. You gain plus two fun and plus one creativity. Whoa, guys, I am so fun now. I didn't know it was a Scott answer, I just... <laughs> no, you guys said no. I want to befriend Damien a bit more, because even if I don't date Damien, I feel bad that I tried to kill him. <laughs> Damien is an angry bottom. Boss. <laughs> I feel like this is going to be a fun table, though. It's like a top is a bottom. <laughs> yes. I mean, you're probably not wrong, let's be honest. But <laughs> No sooner have you sat down at Damien and Rianza's table than a haunting melody fills the air. It's a melody of cold northern peaks, of cloying sweetness, of a supple bovine tweet, the song of... The ice cream wizard! He's here? He's here? I'm getting so much ice cream and then puke on someone I don't like! Oh goodness, the ice cream wizard only comes once per solstice during the hour of ascendant pancake. You see an old dude in a floppy blue hat pushing a refrigerator cart with this shit magic painted on the side. Ah, so many great options to choose. Should I get a magma bar? Brain destroyer? Chocolate boomstick? What about fear of death? A frozen cobra? Bizarre berry blitz? <laughs> Moss? <laughs> Sunset says acts like a top is a bottom. Moss then says mood. <laughs> and... <laughs> You saw nothing. O okay, Sunset. This this won't be immortalized in Twitch VODs forever, I promise. Uh, someone clip that. <laughs> the wizard's frozen treats invariably turn me into a frog for some reason. Perhaps I simply have not tried the right one yet. But which to try? If only someone would suggest a solution to what is truly the most difficult problem I have ever faced. Try the sugar blasted, sugar basted prince lips, or beat him up and take all his ice cream. Damien, Damien, 
<laughs> How boorish. Did someone say bullrush? <laughs> no, I said boorish. As in lacking in social... Oh, I see. <laughs> you did not mishear me after all, but was simply looking for an excuse to beat up the ice cream wizard. Joke's on you, Miranda. I'm never looking for an excuse to beat up the ice cream wizard. <laughs> Look at all this ice cream I got. This one lets you breathe underwater, and this one licks you. <laughs> Oh my god. You brigand! You thief! I got you some sugar basted prince lips! My reservations seem to have suddenly vanished. Good, because I want to try this popsicle. This stick is supposed to reveal how I'm gonna die. Huh? Who knew my death would involve so many bottlenose dolphins? Okay, so, good thing that his death will not include. Us and our fucking catch up. <laughs> also, it looks like that's been clipped because I just I can see the clip count for the stream has gone up. <laughs> Good luck, Moss. And Sunset says I got this on camera <laughs> to celebrate the ice cream heist. Damien takes you to the beach, and he doesn't even try to drown you. Oh, love at first sight. Damien didn't try to drown me, guys. Damien loves us. Ah, oh, it's made to be. Hmm. <laughs> I love how Sunset says, how nice of him. <laughs> yeah, it is quite nice, isn't it? He could have just casually shoved a head in there. We did try to kill him, so it kind of be like, <laughs> fair and fair, you know? In relationships, there's give and take. There's poison them, they poison you and suffocate you. Uh, obviously, disclaimer, please don't. Please, please don't let that happen. So, I want to get some money, so let's go to the library. I don't know why the library is money, but... That day, you spend some time on the library's PCs mining some bitcoins. Oh... It's supposed to have something with solving algorithms and the rise of cryptocurrency. But you guessed that nobody actually has any fucking idea how it works. <laughs> anyway, you gain plus two bitcoins, which is equal to plus two million dollars. Which unfortunately is equal to two monster dollars, so plus two money. Nearby, you can see Scott and the wolf pack talking. <gasps> There's a whole pack! This game is amazing. I'm loving this. Ah. <laughs> Scott. 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 We have the power to drink to date. The greatest power drink to date. Check this out, bro. Dating cryptids, dog coin, bisexual crisis. Literally, like, I want to date all of them. They're all hilarious. And I don't know where to start. Uh, the, like, mild shot. Uh, fucking, fucking the thing, you know the the mild shots at um Bitcoin. Uh, I love the the fact that there's a pronoun switcher at the beginning and things. Ah, uh, I feel represented. This game is so good. Also, Sunset says there's a monster prom too. Okay, so after we have dated like every person in this one. And it's DLC, I, I'm getting that one, and we're doing that too. <laughs> you guys better strap in. <laughs> I just poured tea down myself, it's fine. Uh. Oh, I read the power of drinks! But wait, this new cutting edge sports supplement is like no other before. Also, there's a hot NB person in it, I approve. I... I, I need to see this. They better look just like me, though. Otherwise, I'll be like, mm, I'm offended. Why am I not the hot NB person? They always say support NB people, but they never say that NB person is kind of NB hot for that, you know? <laughs> There's no need to mix. There's no need to mix it with in with beverage. You can consume it using only your nose. 
It's called Coca Ain. Yeah, yeah. Coca Ain. Wow. That totally doesn't sound like your regular power drink. Sorry, I'm, I'm trying. Uh, with the other guy, I'm really failing to do like the Yo, Dubro voice right now. I don't know why. <laughs> Normally I'm good at that. <laughs> Which definitely means it's cutting edge, just like you said. Ah, oh no, uh, it, it said it's got 15% protein or something. God damn it, with all these crazy pranks. But before you can do anything, Scott has snorted all of the coke. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> no! So they told him it was an energy supplement, and he just did cocaine. <laughs> And he's gone full wolf, full wolf mode, and now he's basically unleashed, and it is destroying everything he sees. You need to do something to calm him down, but what? Guys, do I give him some lavender scented cocaine that I happen to have on me for some reason? Or a fidget spinner? <laughs> I love this game, this is so fucking good! Uh, <laughs> <God>. Um... <laughs> Everyone's saying fidget spinner? Fair? <laughs> I feel like Poke would be funny though, you know? <laughs> he starts spinning a flashy fidget spinner in front of Wolf Scott. He stops we- Oh yeah, I'm supposed to be doing an Aussie voice for all the- the narrator. Until someone changes the voice for the narrator with the awful accent with the point thingy. <laughs> I feel like Liz probably thought I'd do this for five minutes and get bored. According to the thing that says when someone's like redeems an activity, it's been 43 minutes. <laughs> it's so spinny. After a while he he reverts to his normal self. Because everyone knows that cocaine triggers a werewolf transformation. But a fidget spinner can cancel it. Whoa! This thingy is the best thingy ever! It's like, like, a very safe and friendly shuriken! Can I keep it? <laughs> I don't know what my Scott voice is, it's like a really shit shaggy, like, a Scooby voice. <laughs> but, like, now I've started doing it, I'm, I'm in for the long haul, I think. My voice is gonna hate me tomorrow, but... <laughs> if stream chat loves me tonight, it's fine. How can you say no to that pair of puppy dog eyes? Hey! <laughs> you see Scott playing with your fidget spinner. <laughs> Still managing to wreak some havoc, despite calling it very safe and friendly. Clumsy, handsome Scott. <laughs> you gain plus two charm and plus one smarts. Oh, oh dang, my charm is getting up there too. Oh. Week three morning. Mistake. I want to go somewhere I haven't been yet. Let's go to the auditorium! That day, while rehearsing for the class play, it's as if though the muses themselves have descended to give you a blowjob. A figurative blowjob. Your performance is intense and inspiring. It will be remembered for generations, which is pretty rad by high school play standards. You gain plus two creativity. Yeah, that's that was my thoughts too, boss. <laughs> that's why I read it like that. I saw it and it was just like... Hmm? Hmm? <laughs> you bump into Scott backstage where he's busy back bench pressing a fog machine. I feel like it can tell like who you have crushes on as well. Because wherever I go at the moment, Scott is always there. 
that's kind of cool though because it means you don't have to like specifically seek them out by going to the locations like it gives you a nice variety and you can like grind your your points up a bit <laughs> the characters require a specific amount of stats ah that makes sense When he sees you, he sets down the fog machine, wipes his forehead, and looks up at you panting. <laughs> hey, bro! Sorry, I'm so sweaty! You caught me in the middle of a rehearsal workout. I'm trying to get real swell for the talent show. But yeah, that's, that's cool about the stats. So, so I guess it's good to like have balanced stats too. Because I don't know what they'll need. See? I'm going to do that scene from the end of Hamlet. You know, the one where he plays dead. But for the last part, when Hamlet rips off his shirt, and sees it is Jack's abs. Well, to be honest, bro, I'm not sure I'm jacked enough for the role. If I had another man, I bet I could pull it off. But there's not much time. You don't happen to know a trick for getting killer six pack happens six minutes, do you? <laughs> this game really is not holding off on the weird choices. So we can either give him performance enhancing drugs or a sharpie. Um <laughs> Hmm. I'm tempted to say drugs. Oh, got his crush on his dealer. <laughs> Why not both? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Sunset says, "What if you can be both?" I agree. Like, why not both? Like, hey, like if someone's your love, they can be your your cocaine, right? <laughs> Sunset says, life is strange all over again. I, I guess it is kind of the Finn situation, isn't it? Hmm. Hmm. Hey, Finn's alive. Finn's, Finn's alive. We didn't let him killed, so. But yeah, drugs. Not so smart. You give Scott your black market fitness drug and leave him to his business. Later you run into him in the hall. He doesn't seem happy. The drug you gave me worked, bro. It worked good. My arms got so swole. Make your faces and political opinions. <laughs> you notice muffled voices from beneath Scott's shirt. One says, Man, I'm as an inside drug. <laughs> How am I supposed to object this to Shakespeare and classic? Buff Hamlet? When my abs won't be quiet? A good question. <laughs> and one you definitely don't have an answer to. You lose two smarts and minus one charm. Aww, I didn't know you could lose skill. Does that mean if we go to prom now, he's gonna have like these politically incorrect abs talking to us. I mean, hey, we gotta make some bad decisions sometimes, you know? Uh, I wanna hang out with Damien and Wind Girl for a little bit. Because I think, the thing is, we've got a lot of time left. We can get Scott to love us. And then hang out with other people. Like, we gotta play hard to get a bit, you know? We don't wanna give him everything he wants. Otherwise, what's the point? Hmm. <coughs> hmm. Also, I'm switching to a second mug. I'm not losing my mind, I just have many fluids today. That sounded wrong. Um. <laughs> 
I have drinks, okay? <laughs> you arrive at your chosen table to find Damien dejectedly hefting a ball of mashed potatoes, while Polly sadly passes around through the same. Ugh, seriously. What do we have to do to get a food fight started in this cafeteria? Ugh. I honestly do not know. I tried throwing potatoes at people and yelling food fight, but I think everyone is scared of me to fight back. And I can't and I can't throw any food because of my stupid ghost hands. Plates, mirrors, antique furniture? Sure. But why not food? There's got to be a good way to provoke a food war. My dads are always telling me to be more political. But we're not... But we're not political. Your strength is hitting things, and my strength is being unbelievably hot all the time. Ugh, oh, mood. <laughs> unbelievably hot. That's it. We'll set the cafeteria on fire! Wait, no. That's not a solution. That's just arson. Why do I always jump straight to arson? It's hard to watch them struggle through this by yourselves. By themselves. So you step in with an idea of your own. <laughs> Get kidnapped by Trojans. Hey Polly, do you know the Greeks fought this whole war over Helen of Troy's face? We need you to get hit up by Trojans. Or wars are fought by scarce re resources. Steal everybody's food and put it in a pile. I feel like this is probably what they want me to say for Damien, but I don't think it makes sense. She won't be saying the others about the kid, not my Trojans. Whoa! Is that what politics is? Beating people up and putting their stuff in a big pile? didn't know I was already so good at politics. And I can roll around in the food pile. It feels so good on my non-skin. Damien spends the rest of lunch piling up everybody's food into enormous, an enormous food mountain. Hungry students start swarming the mountain, trying to grab what they can, while Damien pelts them with fire and knives from above. In a panic, students turn on each other, fighting the only weapon they have. The food in their hands. <laughs> food fight. Food fight. <laughs> I think a fight like this is how I died. Wait, so she is canonically dead? She's not just like a ghost ghost? The casualties are beyond counting, but no one will be forgetting the food fight anytime soon. So yeah, gay dads. I love the casual representation on top of the other just hella gay representation. This is the best. Oh, I am here for this. I'm so here for this. Okay. I need to get my smarts up a bit because I messed up some. It looks like the auditorium has some smart things. That day, while rehearsing for this class play, you totally forget your lines. It's terrible. But you don't let that get you down. You start improvising all your lines. And it's marvelous. Somehow, it enhances the pathos of the play in an unexpected ways. Is that safe, <laughs> Since half of your improvisation is a rap battle against your inner fears. <laughs> Gain plus two creativity. Okay, that wasn't the one I thought it was, but I'll take it. It's almost time for football practice. But you see Scott without his uniform on, looking sad than you've ever seen him. Is he still sad about his abs talking? I can't believe it, bro. Coach kicked me off the team. It's not fair. How was I supposed to know that the new coca Ian power drink contained cocaine? <laughs> But rules are rules. Apparently doing a ton of cocaine is against those rules. What am I gonna do, bro? Sports is my life! A life without sports is like... A life without... Life? Please, bro. Help me figure a way to get back on the team. 
You'll have to help. The only question is how. Spike the punch with Coke on Prom Night. If the whole team's on Coke, Coach will have to let you play. Or all we gotta do is convince Coach that cocaine is a good thing. A little hands-on demonstration would not. Uh, <laughs> I don't think we should give him more drugs. <laughs> We caused his abs to grow faces, which we don't know if they're still there. In my head canon, they are there until the game tells us they are not there. So, they are there. <laughs> um, so, I think we're gonna spike the punch. <gasps> That's a great idea! Just like the coca- The coke- <laughs> Just like the coach always says. The real team does everything together. Running. Running. Even pooping. We can do cocaine together too. It'll be a real bonding experience. And then the coke will see how committed I am to the team, and they'll have to let me play. My favorite thing about this plan is there's nothing illegal or unethical about it. <laughs> You're gonna have to find some cocaine though. Do you know how to do that? Should be a problem. Are you pretty sure you saw some? Someone's already close somewhere. Ah! Sorry. You gain plus two creativity and plus one fun. Morning. What is I'm getting emotionally attached to these monsters? <laughs> no, same though. They're really cute. Hmm. I'm gonna go to the gym and buy some intelligence. Meow. Welcome to my little shop. Come. Buy some shit. I have shit that will boost your stats. Shit that will lead you into stupid new adventures. Even some shit that might be much needed at some very specific moments. So take a look. So we got a motivational poster about creativity. A corpse. <laughs> it's like some kind of fashion accessory? It's not as if I'm trying to dispose of it. Uh, a penguin mask. <laughs> I must admit, it's kind of hot you're into that kinky shit. A blanket with two holes. A white blanket with two eye holes in it. You'd have to be an idiot to make stick it for a ghost, but most of our classmates are idiots. Cocaine. PR agent. <laughs> Why is there a tampon? Oh, it says for blood rituals, okay. A fake badass tattoo. How much is cocaine? Ten dollars, okay. A Russian novel with an insightful approach to universal matters such as love and death. Is that the one that Liz was talking about earlier? <laughs> Hold up. Is that the... Sorry, I'm trying to find it because I'm like, what? Dostoevsky, Crime and Punishment. I'm assuming it might be. A what now? Yeah, it's a used tampon. <laughs> the gift that keeps on giving. So impractical yet funny glasses. And a sexy fake Latin accent. So, I think... I don't want to spend all my money because we need to buy the cocaine now. <laughs> so, let's buy the gift that keeps on giving because it's free. Oh no. Did that nerf all our skills? I love how Sunset is also just like, for blood rituals, duh. <laughs> so, okay, we need to get money now. Let's talk to someone. Liam? Who's Liam? 
As you carefully approach your chosen table, you see Liam carefully framing his artfully arranged jelly dessert for a transcendent food pick. When... Food. Yep. O D P I C. Ride those picks to victory. What? What does that even mean? When I say food, you say pick it. Food. No. Food. Stop. Two more picks. Hey. Food do we appreciate? Food picks. Food picks. Good. Cease of this incessant chanting this instant. But I'm trying to help you take the best food pick. <laughs> You've been trying to take this food pick for like 20 minutes now. You gotta snap a pick so you can eat your tasty food. I don't eat, Scott. I only order this food so I can take pictures of it, and you're not helping. I know. No! My cheerleading just isn't good enough. What I need is a cheer partner to take me to the next level. No, what you need is a swift kick in the... But it's too late. Scott's already chosen you as his cheer partner. Now it's up to you what the two of you will do. He won't like Mime, and I don't really care about Liam. I like, though, that- what I love with this is the fact that it puts, like, all the characters sat with everyone, like, you get interactions with all of them, because it's, like, they could have just been, like, oh, well, like, the jock will never be friends with the nerd. But instead, they're, like, no, the nerd is friends. I get it. Amp him up. Like, where are the skies? Let's do it. What? No, that's a horrible- Up you go, little bunny. Research for the stars. Okay, I'm actually getting some very artistic angles for my food from up here, but this is still not okay. Well, Liam, always being sarcastic. He loves it. Wait. You chose to finally start understanding what sar sarcasm is. I'm not being sarcastic. You can't fool me, Liam. I know everything you say means the opposite of what I think it means. <laughs> he thinks he knows sarcasm. That's adorable. Liam eventually gets Scott to pick him to put him down by saying he loves being thrown up in the air. Scott still somehow believes he did the right thing and gives you the most intimate fist bump. Aww. That's so cute. <laughs> Evening. Right, let's get more money, because we need to buy that cocaine. <laughs> that day, you spent some time on the library PCs, playing some good old online poker. Gambling seems like a stupid and dangerous decision, but who cares? This time it paid off, so fuck it. Game plus two money. You see Damien being the piss out of a goblin, like he always does when he's depressed. You go over and ask him what's up. Is this whole Earth of the Throne of Hell thing? It's really bumming me out. I hate being a prince of hell, and I'm gonna hate being a prince, a king of hell even more. I mean, how am I supposed to rebel against authority when I am the authority? Ugh. Not even basing the piss out of this goblin is gonna beat me up. He's gonna cheer me up. Damon continues to beat the piss of the goblin, but his heart clearly isn't in it. <laughs> I mean, is there anything rad I can do as a king of hell? Literally anything? Kings have the harams, and I definitely enjoy yours. Or oh, you're forgetting about the ultimate way of fight authority, total war. War. <laughs> oh yeah. War. I totally forgot about war. Probably because my dads are such lame asses. They keep going on about... What's the word? Dip Diplomancy? Diplomancy? 
Diplomacy? Am I saying that right? Diplomacy? Whatever. I'll have it taken out of the dictionary when I'm king. Suck on that, Webster. <laughs> Damien's so excited. He even stops strangling that goblin. Sends you a massage coupon as a thank you. You gain plus two smarts and plus one boldness. Oh, nice. I managed to get charm back up, though. Let's do charm, then. An epic door to door match takes place. Many people fall during the battle. You can't take any more, so you valiantly go straight to the other team's leader and start negotiations for a truce. After hours of intense diplomacy, you commit to an agreement. One unexpected tryst. You gain plus 10 righteousness. But this game is so wrong in so many ways. Do be lucky if you could do anything with that. And plus you charm. Nice. Later, you see Damien packing a bag. I'm going away for the weekend. To detention? I have fucking detention again. Why? Because I rigged the teacher's lounge door with booby traps that poured Zelky piss on whoever opened it? I mean, I didn't even set anything on fire this time. Let me spill the tea. This school is strict as fuck. Anyway, just brainstorming to keep some things entertaining is beyond fucking ditching. So let's do it, or there is cross-species economic and social barriers to make lifelong friends of a diverse group of students in detention and find out through silly dancing that you're not so different after all. <laughs> so the, it's either pitch to Damien the Breakfast Club, or tell him to ditch. I feel like this one has smarts. Guys, what do I do? Do I pitch Damien the smart thing for his own brains? Or, like, the, the smart thing for me, or the smart thing for our relationship? Oh, I love this, though. This is so fun. Not gonna lie, though, I need to stop talking to Scott for a bit, because Scott's voice is killing my throat. <laughs> I just poured a drink down me. Hold up. <laughs> I made a mess. Yeah. Okay, that way. In the breakfast club, he needs pals. That sounds fair. I never really thought of making connections before. I mean, what's this? Spooky high best friend race? Does he think school's, like, fucking drag race? <laughs> but you're right! I could use a scapegoat for some of my more sinister plans. When the weekend is over, the tales of Damien's exploits as an outsider turn buddy echo through the halls. Rumors fly that handshakes were made up, deep secrets are revealed, and a whimsical dance scene took place in the library. By next week, people are still intrigued about why Damien is sort of frozen in the, foot in the middle of the football field with his fist in the air. Damn, did you start a new club? You gain plus two fun and plus one creativity. He's floating in the- Oh, that's adorable. Um. Hmm. So we got all our stats good again. We need more money before we can go buy cocaine, though. So let's take that to our crush. Watching Vera eat is pretty disturbing. Her snakes eat at the same time she does. But at least it's usually quiet. This time, however, Scott is doing his best to change that. Go, Lefty! Gobble that mouse! No, no! Watch out for wriggles coming up from behind! Use that tongue! Go! <laughs> uh... He does this... Every week or so, whenever my snakes need a meal, he seems to think that snake eating contests are a competitive sport. Also, I don't think that he realizes that an actual snake 
eating contest would probably involve people eating snakes. I tried charging him for tickets to get him to stop, but he actually pays to do this. <laughs> I realized that her voice wasn't snaky enough, so I hope that's not annoying. He keeps track of, of each snake's statistics on a little index card. He's even given them names. Go Sliver! No, go Sliver! Go Bendy! Go Sanchez! Go Snake Snake! Those aren't even their names. God, no matter how much he pays for the tickets, it isn't enough. This seems like the only really- this seems like a really tense situation. You resolve it in the only way you know how. By opening your mouth and yelling. <laughs> Boring, this is nothing compared to the Earth One Eating Contest. Oh, snake, 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 snake! Eat that food and stay away! Uh, I'm going with that one for now. Your cat's falling asleep on you. Oh, that's cute. Don't worry about going quiet. I'm, I'm not keeping note of who interacts in the streams, you know? I don't care. <laughs> if you're having a good time, that that's good enough, you know? <laughs> oh my god, I need... The only thing is I hope there isn't another dog character in the DLC when we move to that one. Because I'm gonna lose my voice. <laughs> It's the spirit. Get your head in the game, Sanchez. Do snakes have heads? Or are they just a neck and face? <laughs> That's a good question, actually. I guess it depends how you do it. Whoa! Check it out! Benny's been behind all season with a record low BMI. And that's body mass index. The index is because I wrote it on a index card. <laughs> But now she's hungry for victory. Let's go, Bendy. Swallow all that glory. The snakes really do seem to enjoy having an audience. They're really hamming it up. Or should it be snakey it up? Sky says goodnight and she loves the streams. Aw. I'm, I'm glad your cat likes my streams. <laughs> Aw. Good night, Sky, too. <laughs> Your wild cheering motivates Bendy to really go all out. She tries to grab the mouse out of Lefty's jaws, but the two end up tearing it in half. Ah, ah. My scalp. It'll take my snake trauma slash hairdresser hours to get those organs out. Oh, major foul on Bendy there. He's gonna be out for the rest of the season. Damn it, wrong one. Damn right she is. I'm having her muzzled. And her name is Spervelina. By the time Vera's cleaned up the blood and run off, you've made plans to meet with Scott to watch the next match. Nice. <laughs> I feel so sorry for her. Also, dang, we do not have much time to buy cocaine. So we're going to have to keep going to the library. That day you spent time on the library's PC, sending malicious spam emails in the hope of stealing other people's money. Doesn't sound very nice, but who's really got... Who's really one to blame if there is one such a blatant scam? Hey then, <laughs> cutie pie, I found your pro. Let's chat. Oh, it's supposed to be like a I found your porn threat email, isn't it? You lose 10 karma, which isn't a stat in the game, so who cares, and you gain 2 money! Nice. Look at you all see- you see Scott all but skipping down the corridor, cheerily ratting off some sort of list. Hi pal! Oh man! Today is the best! I was walking out of- Class! And my tail just started wagging all of a sudden. 
You know, sometimes your tail starts wagging and you're not even sure why. I started wondering why my tail would be so happy. And then I realized, it's probably because I'm a werewolf. <laughs> oh, he's so dumb. He is the original himbo, you know? Because being a werewolf isn't about, it's just about the best thing, right? I mean, if I wasn't a werewolf, I wouldn't even have a tail to wag. But I started thinking even more. I realized whatever things would be pretty good. Where dolphins, where pigs, where weasels, where tanks. <laughs> I wonder what the absolute best creature would be. Where vending machines, where fountain, where door, where window, where knob, where floor. Okay, now he's just naming things you can see. You better jump in. A were moon or a were werewolf? A were werewolf. <laughs> A were werewolf? That sounds like the best thing ever. What's better than winning a sports game? Winning two sports games? What's better than gym class? Double gym class? So what could be better than being a werewolf? Being double a werewolf. I wonder if I can get a member of the wolf back to bite me so I, a werewolf, can turn into a werewolf and be a werewolf. Or two could bite me and I could be a were were werewolf? And what happens if a werewolf bites a were were werewolf? Oh man, is this why they make us learn math? <laughs> <laughs> Scott's math performance increases dramatically, but only for the next week. You gain plus two smarts and plus one creativity. <laughs> and I agree, Moss. Isn't he adorable? <laughs> also, guys, we can buy cocaine. <laughs> Let's go to the bathroom and buy cocaine. That's like the best time to buy cocaine too. When everyone's shitting. <laughs> Shouldn't be out there trying to romance a classmate or something. Anyway, uh, welcome. We could still buy all these other things, but let's buy regular flavor cocaine. Bye, stranger. We got lunch, and then we got after school, and then we got prom. So let's... Oh, they're both at the same table! Both our crushes are in one place. Yes. You sit down to enjoy a nice, normal meal at the Spooky Hike cafeteria, as usual. Well, JK, something fucked up is always going on here, and today is no different. <laughs> I love how, like, self-aware this game is. Oh, damn, I gotta do the Scott voice again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello, Mistake. Did you want to come sit with us and our... Imaginary friend. Uh, imaginary friend? Uh, no one else is here. Their imaginary friend roars in the whole cafeteria for treats. Okay, mistake. You have some smarts. You're probably going to figure this out pretty quickly. Oh no, my smarts are low because of the cocaine. <laughs> Why do we have a wild beast under the table? Why don't you take a guess? He's asking you to guess because we totally forgot our plan. Scott. No, we didn't. Shut up. We we're gonna take it the piano or the saxophone. Mm, I lost my notes. No worries. No notes needed. You know exactly what I should do with this wild beast. Mm. I feel like I need smarts, and this is probably gonna give me more smarts. Because I'm so dumb right now. I'm a dumb bitch. I'm almost... Scott. <laughs> what a kick-ass idea. That was obviously ours. You're so right. That You're so right. That was our idea. Hooray, we're geniuses. That's just what we need to hear. Training montage music. Suddenly, you start a training montage in which the three of you try to teach cooking to the wild beast. You suck at it since you're not big chefs yourselves. And also because it's a wild beast and keeps devouring people and wreaking havoc. But it's an epic training montage. <laughs> Afterwards, you're all sitting excited in front of a total TV. 
The Monster Chef show is about to start. You're holding supportive sign cute supportive signs, and you even got yourself a custom made t-shirt of the wild beast. Wow! This is the big day! Also, I would say the way he's the wild beast, it's not a show. It's still known in the past. Up to your time, it hasn't even ended. Sure. Scott. Time works in mysterious ways when it comes to training montages. Okay, boys. I hope it isn't a souffle challenge. We know the wild beast isn't good at souffles. The wild beast isn't good at anything aside from devouring people and wreaking havoc. <laughs> you quietly watch the show. The challenge is Beef Wellington. Fuck yeah! No souffle! Not surprisingly, before the challenge begins, the wild beast just starts to revire, devour other contestants and destroy the show set. You see the judges screaming, Who the fuck let a wild beast enter the competition? The wild beast is disqualified. Well, I guess that's it. We might have won the cash prize, but we won the most valuable of prizes. The prize of laughing at our wild beast fucking up everything on the monster, sh monster trash set, set, which is a memory we will cherish forever. <laughs> Damien ready to cherish memories that include you. Wowie. Oh no, I I feel like I played it too well between the two of them. I don't know what to do now. I need intelligence. Where's the intelligence one? Oh, wait, you know, this fits as well. We haven't gone to class a single time this whole time. Guys. Let's go to class. That day, you listen to your elders and learn valuable lessons. Sometimes, after all the monster nonsense and the dating gimmicks, you forget that attending class is the primary activity at this high school. <laughs> you gain plus two smarts. Scott catches up with you in the hallway afterwards. He's not looking too good. Bro, did you get those illegal drugs like you said you were? Good? I'm feeling really bad. I don't know if I can go another week without sports. I feel myself getting less while every second. Also, just a reminder to everyone who's here, Scott still has abs that say uh, questionable political opinions. Because I said that I was considering that canon indefinitely unless the game says otherwise. So... <laughs> you gotta spike that punch so the coach lets me back on the team. You gotta! I know you can. I believe in you. I'm sure you've got the best plan ever, all ready to go. You do have a plan, right? Oh yeah, you totally have a plan. It's super well thought out. It involves... Seducing the cafeteria troll in charge of the punch. Or pretending to be a chef and suggesting the prom punch could use a bit more cocaine. Uh, so let's go for the one that probably won't get us get caught. <laughs> I think you're doing this because you're like me. Oh no. No! Uh, did I just dash my chances? Um, okay, so... We picked the plan that wasn't gonna get us caught. Instead, it might have lost us our date. Do we still ask Scott to prom, or do we ask Damien, who is kind of our backup? Guys, I I'm gonna put a poll in chat for the first time this stream. I don't know if people are here. I don't know if anyone cares. But I care. Um, boom. Vote below. Do you want me to date the werewolf? Or the son of the king of hell? Because 
I don't know what to do. Moss says Damien. But is there anyone else here? I still think... I want to date Scott if I can, but at the same time, I don't know. We'll just wait till the timer goes down. It looks like we're probably going to be asking Damien unless someone else has something to flip the scales. Although, I'm going to vote Scott still, I think, because I... Oh, I feel bad for Scott. I want Scott to know that I did that for him. I got the cocaine for him. Uh... Damn it, we got tight. Um, I think I'm still going to try with him. To be honest. Maybe he'll realize that I didn't mean it. You finally pick up your courage and ask your beloved to go to prom with you. Huh? Prom? I don't know. You're nice and all, but I have a great sense of smell. And somehow this smells like a bad idea. So I should pass, bro. Sorry. You knew you should have taken a shower before asking Scott. This highly haunted you for the rest of your life. And you never moved on, becoming a total and constant failure. You never succeeded at anything again. Except for the time you won at Monster Squad Talent. But your talent was being a failure at love and it astonished everyone how bad you are at romance. No less sad, though. No! No! I should have listened to Moss. I should have listened to Moss. I, I, uh, <laughs> so sad. It's so fucking sad. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> no. I don't even know, like, what to say, to be honest. Like, ouch. Scott became an athlete and won an award for the best of doing sports. Vera built an empire. Randa got a job being princess of her kingdom. <laughs> the battle for monster prom I have ended them, but there were plenty of battles left in that war called you. Oh no! <laughs> that hurts. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> uh. I know I'm just saying oh no, but I don't know what to- what else to say. <laughs> I have successfully been as bad at relationships in this game as I have in real life. <laughs> oh my god, no. I'm questioning everything now. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> hey, if anyone's still here, should we do the DLC? And if so, who should we date now? 
<laughs> maybe we'll be more successful. And don't worry, I'm gonna play this again. And maybe we won't screw it up <laughs> next time. <laughs> oh my god, I can't believe we did that. Oh, <laughs> that hurts. I feel that in my soul. When the game was just like, you are sad forever. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> I have unlocked an erotic fanfiction about dragons. New images in the gallery. Ooh, let's look at that for a second. They're all so cute. Oh, look at Scott though. It's not fair that Scott had such a good time without us. <laughs> Tommy! Relationships are hard even without werewolf in boats. True, but I thought it was just gonna be like perfect. 30 out of 3,000. <laughs> Where's, where's my dragon erotica there? That's the real question, you know? Oh, it's members of the production team and stuff. <laughs> I got the rejection ending. Wait, Slenderman? Where was Slenderman? Was that in Monster Sonas or something? Huh? Oh! One of the writers is Slenderman, yeah. <laughs> One of them's just like the Astor Man! The Astor Movie Guy, I love it! Um, okay, so now that we've been rejected by everyone at Monster Prom, I think we should do the DLC. So, uh, see if there's any sayings there. Boop. DLC. Ah, spooky high school, the sweetest years of our lives. Back then we were young and unafraid, sometimes reckless, sometimes stupid, but always willing to live life to the fullest. We we're on a wild journey to discover who we really were. We're gonna be our favorite little non-binary mistake again. Hopefully a mistake will actually get a date this time though. <laughs> we had yet to experience its ultimate challenge, the monster prom. I remember it clearly. Six weeks are left. We all fantasize about our crom dates and all that. Scott Howell. Oh, so some of them are back. Well, happily. Compensate for his rather small brain and a stupidly huge heart. Miranda Vanderbilt. Mermaid Princess. Yes, she was genocidal. Polly Geist. Party goes to an insatiable hunger for all the wrong things. Damien LeVay, a fearless demon with a taste for destruction and a love of fire. Liam de Lioncourt. 4XX, does that mean he's 40 something? That would make him 60, wouldn't it? Because, oh wait, 4XX. So that'd be 10. 4, 10. 10. So I make him 410? I don't know. Hips of vampire who stand off his Shinomino hear the fact that he was truly a lovable dork. Zoe. Forever. An eldritch cutie who went from an endless deity of the Dark Realms to an ultimate fangirl. Calculesta Hewlett Packard. <laughs> V1. A library computer has become a sentient robot, ready to experience life to its fullest. I know Calculus is voiced by Jacksepticeye for the little wah and stuff they do, I think. 
and Vera Oberler, Ob Ob Oberlin, 23. A mean self-made Gorgon with a merciless sense of business. It was clear. It had to be one of them. But who? Is that Princess Gobblegum in the audience? I don't know, Moss. I will have a look. We only had four weeks to choose our prom date. And even more daunting. Six weeks. Wait, four weeks? I said six. We only had six weeks to rule them and conquer, conquer their heart. I said we were young and unafraid. We are ready to start. I don't know if any of the silhouettes looked like um, bubblegum. Welcome to Monster Prom's stupidest pop quiz ever! So there's the pop quiz again. One day you wake up and swap bodies with your mom. In a very 90s film fashion. What's the worst thing that could happen? She's messing with my Spookify playlist and putting all her trash metal in it. She's killing her lifelong rival in my body so she can frame me for the murder. Or she's meeting with all my friends and actually being more popular than me. That's probably my biggest fear. <laughs> You're elected president for a day. What's the first law you pass? No, I just clicked one by mistake. I don't even know what I did. I got pause my stream VOD. Not VOD or whatever. Uh, so I accidentally clicked one dollar bills of a picture of me with saying by my awesomeness, my presidency may last the day, but my fame will last forever. As opposed to talking about how presidents don't pass laws or that you can deduct taxes by writing sonnets, which I think would have been fucking adorable. Uh, okay. School isn't working out. Time to go stripping. What's your stage name? Duchess Henrietta Honeylips the Third. Fuckfest Triple Explosions. My name plus the naked mistake. The naked, I guess. Kawaii pussy. <laughs> Max pleasure model three thousand. Or excuse you, I wouldn't be the strip hari. I'm the damn pimp. Um. <laughs> I think mistake the naked sounds the funniest. Ooh, it's a plus to Scott. Did you find your zo zodiac sign to be inaccurate? Design your own personal zodiac sign. Now cannon lovers, the rad sword on fire, the rich bitch, the randomly may arranged set of stars, the happy-go-lucky ecstasy pill, or the ambiguous iguana. I like that one. So what my stats gonna be, let's see. Ooh, ooh. Okay. I think that as tradition befits, we should start in the bathroom. That day you skip class and just hang out in the bathrooms because you respect no authority. Guess some people want to watch the world burn. Let's give him class and hang out in the bathrooms. Give zero shits but two boldness. Notice Liam and Scott having a discussion. Scott is confused and Liam is bored. She seems they're probably having an argument. Look, not to that I care. But aspiring to be a professional sports style, sports star is both impractical and passe. Wait, you don't care? Well, you walked all the way over here just to tell me that. But you don't want to be like professional magnetic ibuprofen. Mimetic influencer. Try to keep up. But how does a how does one of those guys earn money? Oh, mimetic influences don't earn money, Scott. We earn cultural capital. Oh, okay. How much cultural capital does a sandwich cost? I can see that I'm not going to get through to you. Hey, could you explain to this cretin why my career path is objectively the best? Yeah. Could you explain what a cretin is? Guys, do I try going for Scott in this situation, or do I ditch Scott? Scott Scott ditched me in the first semester, so... I don't know. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> dang it, though. I'm still so sad about that. Ooh. Mm -mm -mm. Date Vera? 
she's so cool. Maybe. I mean, I feel like with that, it kind of just depends what Vera's like, you know? If she vibes with my vibe, if my vibe is compatible with her vibe, then maybe we shall vibe together in the vibiness of vibes. Out of these, I'll just go with Scott. Not very far. Wait, wait, wait! So you can for a very far and make money? This is the best thing he's ever heard in my life! And that are, those are the two things that are the best in my life! Oh, no, Scott. What's best in life is nothing. Life is an endless void of hypocrisy and bad remixes of your favourite songs. But I will admit that by your metrics, My career choice is technically inferior. I suppose we'll just have to agree to disagree. Alright. I love agree. Scott trots off happily. Unaware of the existential crisis he's called for Leo. You gain plus two charm and plus one creativity. Noon. Vera's the mermaid, right? Or is she the cryptid? I don't really remember, to be honest. <laughs> or is she the ghost? I'm pretty sure she's the mermaid, right? The I can't talk. <laughs> this is what happens when you speak in a bad Australian accent for the majority of an hour. She's snake hair. Oh. I don't know. Snake hair? Out of all the woman, she's like the least cool woman. She just has snakes for hair. Like, all she has is snake hair. She's like, I'm not like other girls. I have snake hair. Which is really appropriate because that's like the voice I gave her to. Most well, so you have to fight her case. Why should I date Vera? <laughs> There's a robot with a cute smiley face. I don't know. I'm I'm kinda mmm Je suis indecisive. She's mean but secretly a sweetheart. Well we can talk to her for a bit and see if she becomes more of a sweetheart. I'm kinda like I wanna woo the cryptid. Calculester or Damien? I'm like, because I feel I feel betrayed by Scott. Vera's day drinking her customary lunchtime scotch. Because you can drink whatever the hell you want in this school. But Scott's not making it easy for her. Hey Vera. What you drinking? Oh my god, look at his cute little outfit. Scotch? Why? Because it smells like a delicious fire. I'm curious, what's it called? Scotch. Yes. Yes. No, that's what it's called. What? S Scotch. Yes. No, I'm not saying your name. I'm saying the name of the drink I'm drinking, it's... Scotch! Sorry. Distracted. A second? Something's making a noise. It's mine? No! It's mine! Then why is it called Scotch? That's just what it's called. It's like an emergency drink for Scotch. I mean, it's like an energy drink for Scottish people. Hey! I'm a Scottish person. I'm a Scottish person. Is this possible to me? I'm the most Scot. No. <sighs> what will it take to get you to drop this issue? It's not, not going to drop it. Unless you do something. So you cut in and say. It's actually called Scots. But today is opposite day, so everything that Scots is actually a virus. Do you mean today is an opposite day? 
No. <laughs> not. Sorry. Not Vera. I guess I'll be taking your drink. Wink. Wait, time out. Remembering that Scott's is first. Do I have to give Vera all my stuff? Yes. Oh, okay, and does Vera have to give me all her stuff? Sure. Unfortunately for you, I have no stuff. All my possessions are owned by cleverly disguised shell com companies. Now, hand over your wallet. Look, I'm just using her. Now I, now I help her. She's just using me to mug people. Okay, okay. Why, well, opposite day sure is the best, isn't it? It sure is. I'm just going to leave you alone, you and Vera. Definitely don't spend all his money on cocaine. I feel bad now. Scott's other outfit's really cute. What's my lowest fun? I need to get fun up. So let's go outside. Start out half hour rave that goes full crazy. At one point there are like 100, 300 people. Some of them demons. Gain plus you fun. I noticed there's Scott next to Vera. These two hardly hang out. You wonder what's up. Scott seems to be showing Vera some kind of sports diagram. But we just start. We just keep losing games over and over. Coach says we're just not sporting hard enough. But I'm sporting as hard as I can. You notice I'm kind of taking the gruff out of his voice at this point. Just because at this point we've been going for a while. <laughs> My voice is setting. Goodbye. <laughs> I, I think he's cute still. He's wearing like loads of different outfits in this one. And they're adorable. Moss, help. I'm having a bike crisis right now. They're both kind of cute. I don't know what to do. Coach says, We're not, not, I'm sweating as hard as I can. Since you're super smart and everything, maybe you could. Fix your entire team in 10 minutes. Well, obviously, I can do that. I'm incredible. Listen, what you need is an oblique strategy. A new technique that your opponents won't expect. Like poison darts. Or a vicious campaign of psychological warfare. Or, or, now's your chance to impress him. Drop him an idea that will show him how much you know about winning sports. What you guys need. I was really a truck. No one will be able to stop them. Blackmail material. Oh, no, blackmail material is unethical. She's saying, put a camera in the opposing team's room? That's evil. But... Scott may have stood me up in semester one, but I'm going with Scott's. Dude, what a killer I... Dude, what a killer idea. My buddy Truxasaurus. My buddy Truxasaurus has wanted to join the team for a while now. I don't see him. I can't even being, uh, of him being too lethal, whatever that means. I'm just saying, Moss says, spiking the punch with coke was also unethical. Spiking the punch with coke was for love. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now that we're losing all the time, though, I'm sure his coach will change his mind. You saved Scott's team. And probably doomed hundreds of rival teams to death by Truckasaurus. Score! You gain plus two boldness and plus one fun. I'm gonna do money now. Money Bitcoin. Plus two Bitcoins. Just plus two money. Wait, that's Scott and Vera again. Hey, where are you going, right? Oh, you noticed. But okay, Vera's bad, but I like her. See, that's why I'm go getting at Moss. Vera's nice or whatever, but Vera's gonna kill us all. Oh, you noticed. And you're a girl, right? Oh, you no noticed? Well, I was watching this high school movie the other day, 
there were these mean girls, and the mean girls were mean cheerleaders. Now I know you're not interested in being a cheerleader, but maybe you could do something to help the football team. I mean, according to the movie, high school athletes and high school mean girls are natural allies, right? As much as I hate to admit it, you do have a point. I suppose you have some idea of what I should do? Well, I don't really do ideas, but I'm sure a mistake here is a great idea. Tell her! They both look at you. Well, what's your idea? Forget cheerleaders, we need fear leaders. Instead of pumping our team up, they'll make other teams feel like shit. She is blushing, but she's evil! <laughs> Maybe just stop having our players assassinated for no reason. Oh, I'm sorry. Are the assassinations not helping the team? She's been assassinating people, Moss, and you want to date her? <laughs> I thought I was weeding out the weak and unattractive members of the herd. I'm afraid I don't know much about sports. No, Vera, that totally makes sense. Sometimes ugly people are really good at sports. <laughs> Oh, I see. From now on, I'll consult you before having any of those team members mysteriously executed. I see no problems with this. You do. But you decide it's better to stay out of it. You gain plus two charm and plus one smart. Did you just say assassinate me, Vera? Moss, in this one stream, you've said that you're a bottom and you want to be killed by Vera. I I don't know what to say to you anymore. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why, Moss? <laughs> Ooh, who's this? I've never seen her before, I wanna go talk to them. You're about to take a bite of your sandwich when some douchebag rips a hole in the fabric of reality. It's desire the interdimensional prince. I have searched far and wide for a hero capable of solving a most fiendish riddle for me. The riddle of I have to get my TV to switch from HDMI 1 to HDMI 2. I've tried everything short of actually using the remote control. You hear a deep sigh and a comfy prince to his dimension, where you solve his problem by using the remote control. You truly are both wise and generous. As a thank you, please allow me to teach you one of my kingdom's customary rituals. Perhaps laser communion might interest you. Or reverse baptism. Or eggs. The choice is yours. Oh, you just said, is that David Bowie? Uh, <laughs> make a new ritual. I think it's David Bowie. <laughs> but it could be. I'd date David Bowie. If he wasn't, like, dead, dead and shit. Like, not, not gonna lie, sometimes that's a bit of a deal breaker. Just sometimes. If they're hot enough, it's fine. Uh... Or if, if the hey, one of the people in this game is a ghost, so that's fine, right? Uh, oh, we have a ritual for this, the ritual of making up rituals. This is so hey, we have so many dumb and bad rituals. First, we get incredibly high on interdimensional weed. Then we get to do pretty much whatever we want, and then we make it illegal for people not to do that thing once a year. Sounds good to you. You guys get ripped and invent a holiday called Shrimp Christmas. <laughs> it's Christmas. Everyone just gets stockings of shrimp. Delivered by a giant shrimp. <gasps> Aussie Chalky would love this. <laughs> He's like, hey. It oh, would you look at this? It's Shrimp Christmas, guys. Let's put some shrimp on the barbie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It becomes so popular that it leaks over to your dimension where it places actual Christmas. You gain plus four creativity. And a shrimp on the barbie. Liz, what have you unleashed, by the way? Uh -huh. <laughs>
David Bowie was your gay awakening? I mean, whose was it? Really? From what I've heard, it seems like it's the whole planet anyway. He was all planets anyway. Uh, we need more fun. Oh. A corpse. And a blanket with two holes. And dra erotic dragon. I'm gonna buy a corpse just to see what happens to be honest. Like I thought it was one where I could just go gain my fun. I didn't realise it was um that at the moment. I have another rave. Oh, I gained fun. Nice. While doing all that, you've been carrying your newly acquired corpse as if it was a totally normal thing to do. Some people seem to be otherwise. Oh no, it's the four most hateful people in school. Why are you carrying a corpse, idiot? Shh. What a shameful display of distaste. <laughs> yeah, what a noob. Carrying around corpses is for noobs. <laughs> Ooh, corpse. I love corpses, and I'm super drunk. Okay. Three of the most hateful people in school. And Polly. As the school's social elite, we disapprove of this. I'm the head of the hierarchy and I can't condone such stupidity under our domain. I'm the taste of the hierarchy and I don't appreciate such a pervile use of a corpse. A pure vile use of a corpse. Oh, pure vile use of a corpse. The R's in this are hard to read. Also, a lesser known fact about corpses. They smell. I'm the fist of the hierarchy and I want to punch you because I'm punching people. Wait, I'm the fist of the hierarchy and I want to punch you because punching people is what I do. I'm Polly. I'm also like super drunk. So like, uh, whatever Vera says. <laughs> Yikes. Despite your disregard for social conventions and a school hierarchies, you feel the urge to please them. So maybe it's that's what this game is about. When you bought this corp, Valerie totally told you it was a fashion accessory, and she was absolutely not trying to dispose of the body. Now you're starting to think she might have fooled you. No time to lose. How can you convince them that the corpse is actually a very hot fashion accessory? Trivia facts about ha fashion accessories: most are worn on your head. Quick, put the corpse on your head. Rip the brand logo of the most. High-end accessory you own and put it on the corpse. I'm doing that. You quickly rip up the logo of another piece of clothing you had and put it on the corpse. <gasps> Wait! Look! The corpse is actually a Burger Queen! Damn. You're so poor, your best piece of clothing is actually a paper bag from a first tune you sometimes use to have. So, you were going to eat this corpse? Disgusting! Fast food companies, am I right? They're always finding new lows. <laughs> Give me that. Damien takes your corpse and bites it off. He chews it for a while. Hmm. You're completely right. It is disgusting. No seasoning and super dry. That is not even gluten free. So immoral. I always suspected mistake was into fast food and necrophagia. You have eat poor eating habits written all over your face. <laughs> Still drunk. So we just accidentally had someone eat a corpse. No! Corpse kind of unseasoned and dry. Oh no. I should have seasoned the corpse. I think I'm going to try talking to Scott and Calculester. Because I think Vera thinks I'm horrible now. But also, I don't know. When I found that Vera assassinated people, it kind of a little bit of a turn off, not gonna lie. You arrive at Scott and Calculus's table. Scott isn't there. He comes back when you sit down, clearly delighted. Oh man, everybody's bust real good today. It's like a banquet of bunch. A banquet. A banquet. 
Also, don't worry though, Moss. I am gonna play this game more, and I will date Vera in one of them. I want to like date all the people. Cause now I've started playing this, I'm like, this is actually fucking hilarious. Uh, this might have to be a little series of things I do for a while. And look at this. Mistake is here too. Hey, mistake. I bet you have a butt for me to sniff. Scott. Scott, I advise you to terminate your current course of action. What? Translating previous utterance into Scott readable format. One moment, please. Scott. Smelling butts equals bad. But how can smelling butts be bad when smelling butts is good? It is not good. It is bad. See also uncouth, invasive, and totally nasty. But, 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 but. Either Scott is malfunctioning, or he's just been distracted by some found new butts. Either way, you need to find a way to resolve this dispute. You don't understand, Calculester. Use complete complex analytical software to understand your surroundings. Scott's complex analytical software is smelling butts. Or Calculus is right, Scott, you've got to be polite, respect people's privacy. Why not present them with an official form requesting a butt smelling? Nah, smell their butts. He's he's a cute dog. Probably a veracity. Unlikely. Wait, probability of veracity. Unlikely. Live demonstration required. What? Translating. Mm, one moment, please. Mm, you, imagine I'm making dial-up noises. I can't make them myself. Uh, <laughs> go smell a butt, Scott. That is a good boy. You don't have to tell me twice. Technically, yes, I did. Please report back with all... Wait, no, oh, damn it. Technically, yes, I did. Please report back with all butt-related findings. You don't have to tell me three times. Here I go. Yeah, boss, I agree. The little faces Calculator makes are adorable. It's got Texas Mose and Matt the Shoggoth's unspeakable crack. <laughs> then Hytales it back to your table. Now, Scott, please share what you have learned. Well, it's been first period in Horned Math. And the second, skip second period to devour shoals underneath the bleachers. He's a Capricorn, and his favorite TV show is The Great British Bake Off. <laughs> also, his first play with Makusa and Ghost. My sensors confirm your report. I suppose there is more than one way to smell a butt, as they say. There is? The fact alone is enough to make Scott as happy as you've ever seen him. Nice work. <laughs> Okay, we need money and fun, so let's do money first. Spam emails. There you are, swiping through potential monster match dates when you Scott Scott pacing and muttering to himself in distress. You can't bear to see someone so adorable in so much pain, so you might as well try to ease it however you can. Well, I made a mistake. Do you think I'm adorable? Yes, in fact, you were literally just thinking that. How did the game know? How did the ga- Moss, I know you think I shouldn't be saying Scott because Scott ditched us in the last bit, but look at his little hoodie and his little trousers and his little tail. Ugh. Anyway. The other day I was trying to put a bar in the forest trying to find a quiet place and a large box to do some push ups before the big sports game. When I suddenly was approached by all these talking forest animals. They were pretty big for forest animals, and I've never seen animals that can talk like that. You never really know what else if you're counting us as animals. And they were so fuzzy and adorable. But they said they were impressed by my pull ups and that I was even more adorable. So the nice little forest animals with the giant heads, made me their king, which was really, really flattering. I just don't know anything about ruling. I'm not sure if I'm good enough to be king. Oh, poor Scott. It's up to you to help him rally. A good king is a strong ruler. Physically strong if he can do a hundred pull-ups. Push-ups, he can be good king. Well, the Troy royalty has been in a new world. He can do pull-ups, so. Strong? But 
I'm strong. You know, you're a strong leader before. I didn't mean actual. I didn't think I meant actual strong. Like Scott strong. I can do 100 push up. I can do 200 push up. That's at least double the right amount. Right? I can check later with a calculator. But does that mean I can be a double kick? You know, we're right now. Scott drops to the floor and begins doing push ups. One, two, three. Things progress pretty smoothly for dozen push several dozen push ups until 86, 89, 70, 71, 72, 89. 50? 51? Wait, no. Wait, no. I can't count to 200. I can't even count to 100. But you said I could be a good king if I could do 100 push ups. And I can't do that because of my stupid numbers. Or Scott defeated again by his biggest component yet. Numbers! <laughs> oh, Scott flees the scene in embarrassment and despair, clearly on the verge of tears. His embarrassment and despair. <laughs> Is only matched by yours as you lose two fun and one smart. I forgot he can't count. We're halfway through and I might have fucked it up again. Let's get more fun back because we lost fun there. We're casually chatting with Juan, the small magical cat. Latino cat. We start telling him that hilarious story of what happened last summer at Monster Camp. You know which one? The one involving the beehive, the blow up dollar, the president, the penguin mask, and the mystery of the Goblin King? So lots of people start joining you to hear the story. By the time you say where the Goblin King was, a hundred people also burst into hysterical laughter. You turn on a mobile app that captures a laugher and turns it into plus two fun. You notice Polly and Scott on the lawn doing something. Polly's chewing determinedly on a hula hoop, while Scott clearly covers himself in sunglasses. Despite your better judgment, you ask what you're doing. Yoga, bro. What does it look like? Liam said we should practice some yoga in order to cleanse our bodies of all the drugs and uh, sports. And I was like, uh, sure, I'll try anything. What? So, here we are doing like uh, yoga. It seemed like a lot of work to look up yoga on the internet, so instead we just made an educated guess based on actually nothing. Oh man, what if we're doing it wrong? Yeah, like, do you know anything about yoga? Do you have any tips for how to do yoga the best? Yoga pants! <laughs> Yoga pants? Are those pants that do yoga? Or pants made out of yoga? Neither is silly. I can't believe I didn't think of yoga pants before. They mean yo y o g a pants? As in yielding organic gun armor pants? They're what battle mechs were when they want to breathe down there. Oh, that makes so much sense. Of course you want your gun armor to be breathable and organic of you during yoga. Polly just happens to have two pairs of YOGA pants in her locker. She and Scott lay waste to the countryside and get super limber in the process. <laughs> you gain two creativity on a one fun. <laughs> Ooh, who's that? Is that another werewolf? I feel like there's less people here now. We find Scott and Damien interested in their, Pokemon, in their favorite game, Pokemon's Go, based on the classic Pocket Humans. My Reginald Bosworth, you no, oh, my Reginald Bosworth uses incoming tax audit. <laughs> oh, my Lindsay Wormuts never saves receipts. It's so perspective. Ha <laughs> ha! And now my finishing blow. The wait, what? Reginald contracted lymphoma? Reginald's lymphoma deals 500 physical damage to him and 90, 999 emotional damage to him and his loved ones? Whoa! You won again! Why are all your Pokemon so unhealthy, Damien? 
because I make them all smoke cigarettes and live next to a toxic waste dumps, obviously. Mm, maybe you should stop that. Or is it fun in it? It's not never match. <laughs> what are you two nerds doing? Nerding around? <laughs> Nerd up, nerds. Whoa, Scott, is that you? <laughs> we didn't notice you under all that nerdery. What are you doing playing a dumb video game for stupid babies? <laughs> My Pokemon isn't dumb. It's cool. Because, because... No way Scott gonna come up with anything, but if you do, maybe you can score some points with Scott or Damien. Say nothing about the most steamed vegetables. Or show my phone equipped with Pokemon's Go and also these. No way! I didn't know that was a feature of Pokemon's Go. It's not. They're just gonna grab someone else. It's not. It's they're just gonna grab someone's phone and ah, oh, the oh, I feel seen. Mm. You snatch Damien's phone, heft it in one hand, and fling it across the cafeteria. Hey, my phone! What the dick was that for? Hey, someone threw something. I'll get it! Oh. <laughs> Whoa, bro. Check out the perfect spiral on that. Whoa, bro. Check out the perfect spiral on that throw. That's technique right there. <laughs> Let's all install Pokemans on our phones right now, then throw our phones at each other. The Wolfpack bound off to play full contact phone tag. Scott soon returns with Damien's phone in his mouth. Damon's phone is pretty much destroyed, but Scott is so happy to be playing fetch with you. Moss, if you're still here, please tell me you forgive me because of the cuteness. Attention. <laughs> okay, uh, we need money. Still. So we do more poker. Suddenly you hear an outburst of swearing so eloquent you can't possibly repeat it. You go to see what it's all about. We've been over it 11 times, Scott. I'm sorry. Everything is hard. Hey, mistake. Come help us. I'm trying to help Scott with tomorrow's history test. So far, it seems like the biggest challenge I've ever faced. I gave him this copy of last year's test, but he dazzles me with new levels of idiocy every time. Mm -hmm. I am. I just can't. And those questions are complex and smart. Scott's such a golden retriever. Damien's one of those mean cats that like one people. <laughs> That's so true. And in one of the runs, Damien will be the mean cat that likes us. Obviously. <laughs> oh, for God's sake. For God's sake, Scott. That one isn't even a question. You just have to put your name there. I'm sorry, William. I'm really trying. Funny, that was a way to make me learn things good. Make him eat your homework. <laughs> or give him a biscuit every time he does something right. How about that? You start with basic questions. Throwing Scott a bacon treat every time he gets an answer right. The results are remarkable. It's amazing. I'm so smart now. See, we just had to find the right approach, right? We can actually do something useful now. Alright. I have to admit. Where's my treat? What do you mean? I answered a question. We weren't studying, though. Where is my treat? You and Liam end up in the infirmary. And Scott ends up not passing his history test. You learn about the po perils of positive reinforcement. <laughs> and the only cost has been your physical well-being. You lose two charm and one smart. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> I'm going to the bathrooms because I want to be more cool. I know I don't really need it right now. There are three wild hyenas there. We run security here. You subdue them with the help of a hair comb. God bless the monster scouts and other idiotic scenarios they prefer had you before. By the time you get to the bathrooms, you've totally gained two boldness. Scott strolls by, happily munching something. Liam gapes at him a pull. What on earth are you eating, Scott? This delicious new flavor of mangoes potato chips. By the way, can we just appreciate- I still have a fucking corpse on me. 
Also, I'm considering that all my episodes are in the same universe. So Scott definitely still has talking abs. Maybe he's taught them some better political views now. I just want to add that to the headcanon. <laughs> he's basically a golden retriever, as Moss said, and his abs just, like, spout political opinions. I'd like to think they're, like, at least, like, a liberals now. Like, then they're, they're not the best. But they, they, they strike right sometimes. <laughs> uh, this dangerous new flavor... Oh, I said that. Yeah. Mm, really? Because it looks like a raw severed goat head inside a cardboard tube. Yeah. I guess it does. Got just one of those potato chips. Still tasty, though. Tasty? Tasty? Does one ton environmental destruction sound tasty to you? Yeah. I don't know. Is it supposed to be jerky? No, Scott. Don't you realize that in order to harvest these goat heads, Fangles and Co. decaffeinate millions of innocent goats every year? <laughs> but what do I do with the bodies of the goats? Nothing. It's a horrendously wasteful practice. Oh no. All those poor headless goat buddies running around and bumming anything. We have to stop them. Really? I was trying to make you feel guilty. I don't actually have a plan of action. But if someone here was to suggest one. Army of them. Full. Undead gods. Ah, uh, yes. Necromancy. The ultimate tool in the protesters' arsenal. You take out your abominations against an HR101 textbook and get to work. But soon. Why are the guys running into walls, trees, and each other? Because they don't have heads, Scott. Or eyes. Somehow our friend here didn't take that into account. Why would you let him do it, if it wasn't gonna work? For the lols, Scott. For the lols. The lols are here at yours, man. Literally... Two fangles sues you... Well, fangles sues you for unlicensed necromancy. <laughs> you lose two money on one smart. Damn it! I'm trying to play the game properly, and I'm just driving myself down the drain, you know? This one. That's the forking spoon. It's a spoon for picking up your forks, so you don't have to touch them with your fingers. And that one? That's the tuning fork, for making sure all your other silverware is tuned to A minor, as is proper. What about this one? That's the dairy knife. It's for milk. Wow! Do people ever invent new silverwares? All the time. But none of them are any good. It would take a genius of true subtlety to improve on the existing canon. <laughs> a genius of true subtlety? Genius and subtlety are your two fucking middle names. What are your two middle fucking names? You suggest the ultimate new silverware. Just just like Bubblegum? Yeah, I, I do wonder if there's a reason for that. Like, you say it must be a reference. I would not be surprised, Moss. Hmm. Like, we saw the little Slender Man and the Monster Sonas, so... Maybe. Salad Harp or Hands, I think. My favorite silver! Egans! How crude! I know, right? My only more favorite are silverware are face and mouth! Scott, I think you're really misunderstanding the purpose of silverware. No, I don't think so. Scott reaches into his backpack and pulls out two silver hands, a silver face, and a silver mouth. He holds his hands in his mouth, the hands in his hands, the face in his mouth, and devours his lunch in a highly counterintuitive way. I stand corrected. You're not just standing, you're sitting. Anyway, now I gotta put on some outline. Oh, that silver is really bad for my skin. <laughs> Scott lets you put the ointment on him. Nice. <laughs> Moss, I think we might actually get with Scott this time. I'm sorry you basically just had to watch me get Scott twice now. But hey, it's worth it. Because Scott. Oh, I don't want to buy anything. I need money, though. I need fun second most, though. So that's us some fun. Groovy Musaka. We teach everyone the Groovy Musaka. We gain two fun and a cool story to tell the grandkids. Casually reading. 
the latest issue of Monster Magazine where we are rudely interrupted. See, even mistake a sensible monster with a good head on their shoulders. Or at least some plus smarts is reading Monster Magazine. Mom says, honestly, if you like Scott, live your dreams. <laughs> yeah, thanks. And yeah, as I said, I want to, I think what I've found from playing this, I really want to play more because I want to date all the other people. It just kind of like, I was like so disappointed when I failed it the first time. I was like, I can do better. I can do so much better. <laughs> but I definitely, I want to try Vera because I'm interested what happens as you get to know her because like we find out more about Scott as we talk to him more and stuff. So I'm expecting... Vera might be nicer than we think, or we'll find out more crimes against humanity she's committed. Liam seems like a snob, I don't like him. Yeah, although I do want to try dating him at some point. Yeah, and that's bad, because we're wise, so we need to fight. Scott takes the magazine from you and punctures it. Alright, let's get on solving our the world's major problems. No, Scott, we're social justice warriors. You see, mistake... You see the mistake. Ever since our main success with the go Pangle's goat head debacle, we've taken it upon ourselves to stand up against injustice. By punching magazines. No, Scott. As you no doubt noticed, Monster Magazine's sexist Monster Alive campaign this year is Count Victor von Musselbod, a werewolf prince bodybuilder. He makes him the fifth royal werewolf bodybuilder in a row to earn the title. What about those of us with leaner physiques? What of our representation? Now, if we're endeavouring to get Monster Magazine to name someone from a more marginalised community as their sexiest creature alive, we just need to figure a way to convince them. Since I guess punching the magazine was a good enough. <laughs> That's easy. All you need to do is solve everyone's body images forever. Is make your own version of the magazine, featuring a three-wing chupacabra. Lean heavier into the warrior part. Storm Monster Magazine. Hold the other and chief captive until he promises to stop exclusively promoting one aesthetic. I feel like both of these could go wrong. I'll go with this one though. New new magazine seems like one more where there's less that could go wrong. Especially when I'm still holding a corpse. What a brilliant idea. Screaming Chuka Cabras are definitely an underserved population. I played a sports game and get someone exactly like that. He's always wanted to be a brodel, but never thought anyone could want to do pictures of him. Now he can. You can, and you do. You do all the pictures and make a mock-up of your own Monster Magazine. It goes hella viral, and before long, it's becoming more celebrated than the actual Monster Magazine. Pretty soon after that, you get a letter from the editor-in-chief, officially admitting defeat in the face of your superiority and relinquishing his magazine headquarters to you. Sweet. Now you have a magazine, which instantly brings you... Plus three money! Hey, I know you're about to move in, or move on to your next misadventure, but I just wanted to say really quickly, I was pretty much the only girl in the school shaped differently than the rest of our classmates. It was really nice to see a three-winged chupacabra celebrated over a royal werewolf bodybuilder. It gives us hope too, you know. It was actually really sweet. The coven is so much cooler when they're not babbling on about that end of the world bullshit and expecting your help with it. <laughs> Oh, they're a coven. That's cool, though. I want to date them as well. It's, it's way more fun to interact with your classmates when they're complimenting you instead. Morning. It's the last week. The last week of high school. Let's get a bit more money. Or, like, I think it's funny if we do the last smarts at the end. Super Benito Bros. Imagine your start kicking. <laughs> you see lots of people with, to see lots of people with a sensationalist video and incredible promises. Nice. You gain plus a hundred thousand money. But almost everything goes to cover costs, and you keep only plus two money. <laughs> After you are considering sitting down to use the library to study books like a nerd, you then realize that's insane. And seeing what Scott's up to seems way more fun. The Coven. Yeah, the coven. Mm-hmm. Oh. Can you imagine how fun it would be to be in a coven? Just be a load of gay witches together, just being gay and witchy and shit. <laughs> I 
<laughs> oh, hey, Mr. Jake. Come to meet my, come meet my friend. Sex kitten 69. Sex kitten 69 made a mistake. I met her on the internet. I only asked if I wanted an animal friend in my area. <laughs> <laughs> So it was like, hot mills in your area. Hot mills in your area. And Skulls are like, okay. <laughs> like, well, sure, why not? Everyone needs an adult friend to explain things like ta- Wait, sure, why not? Everyone needs an adult friend to explain things like taxes and mortgages. <laughs> so first I had to pay for sex to kid in 69 to hang out with me and tell me all about the IRS. But as we became friends... She stopped charging me, and now we just try it a couple times a week. Of course, this means she's spending time with me for free when she could be making money. Oh, I know. I know. She said that for other people, her show is less financial advice and more performance. Usually nude, which is fine to me. Wells love running through the forest, naked under a full moon or any moon. Let's think of the ways to make her show stand out for more from everyone else so people give my friend even more money. Oh, he's so wholesome. So wholesome. So he made a friend with, like, a prostitute. I was just like, oh, you want to be naked? No, that's fine. Like, I just want to talk and learn about the IRS. And now she, like, is his friend enough that she just calls him to chat. Oops. Okay, we just invented inverted scripting, I guess. I accidentally hit enter. But that's adorable. Oh. You'd start one, but you don't know any other gay pagans. I mean... Like... Go find some gay pagans. Sorry, I got distracted by the music for a second. Uh, oh man, I bet you make a great stripper mistake. Let me go brainstorm with sex kitten right away. You didn't tell that planning. Next time you run into Scott, he seems over the full moon happy. Usually sex kitten and me talk privately. But, but she invited me to witness her first big group show with her concept. It was amazing. First she put on a sweater and three pairs of socks on top of each other. Then she added two scarves and five hats. Then a welding mask and sunglasses on top of the welding mask. A waistcoat, a cummerbund, scuba tank, high heels, galoshes over the high heels. That's impressive. Necklaces around the galoshes. I've never seen anything so beautiful in my entire life. She said she made loads of money. Thanks so much for helping. She's one of the nicest girls I know. I'm happy we can all be friends together. Scott's tail wags in your statement. What a cutie patootie. You gain plus two charm, plus one fun. That's so cute! I'm dying! Okay, yeah, we're, we're finished with this one with Scott. But I will do Vera next. Like, probably not tonight, but we will do Vera. You will serve it to Miranda and Scott's table. Find them suspiciously paired onto a burger. Secret sauce! Secret sauce! What dread mysteries do you conceal? <clears throat> Whoa! Do you think the secret sauce can talk to? Cool. <laughs> hey, secret sauce. What are you made out of? No, Scott. My question was rhetorical. Mine was loud. <laughs> oh, it's no use. We will never discern the active ingredient of this delicious secret sauce. Unless... Do you have an idea mistake? Bloody mama's enemies. It's a sauce made of secrets. Of course. <laughs> Look at her face. Secret sauce. The clue is in the title. But what are the secrets made of? Shh, Miranda. It's a secret. But shh. Hey, I. I... <laughs> uh, sure. In an effort to become more mysterious, Scott, as you rub secret sauce over his chest, you're definitely into it. <laughs> Smarts. Let's go to class for the first time. For the last time, once again. 
the day you listen to your elders and learn valuable lessons. You are, sometimes you forget this is the most important thing at school. You gain plus two smarts. You're minding your own business when Scott jogs up and gives you a friendly punch in the shoulder. It destroys you. <laughs> hey, bro, I was just looking for you. You big games? Today, I need a friendly face to pet me up. What's a zero to a hundred so quickly? Legit. One minute we're helping him address his friend in the least strippery clothes ever. The next minute we're rubbing secret sauce on his hairy chest. <laughs> I know, I know. They got cheerleaders for that or whatever. But between you and me, bro, I'm telling you, cheerleaders are hype enough. They're supposed to be giving 110 percent. They only give me 107 to 108 tops. <laughs> That's why I need you to give 115 percent of the game today, so I can give 120 or 135. Thanks, bro. I'm gonna get counting you. See you tonight. Go bump your fist and sprints off without even waiting for you to agree to his cheerleading screen. I guess this is what it's like to be Scott's bro. So you're gonna get him amped at the game. Pick the other cheerleaders up and juggle them. Dress like of like the full moon and perch at the top of the bleachers. Maybe he'll transform. I'm gonna do that. You don't have enough time to improvise a costume. So grab a beach ball from the gym and spray paint it silver. No sooner have you reached the top of the brinkers when a drunken Sasquatch mistakes you for a toy. She chucks you up into the air and you spend the entire game getting punched and tossed by happy moons of the crowd. By the time you finally get free and return your organs to the proper places, the game's over, your team lost. You catch up with Scott in the hallway after. He looks like somebody saw his favorite Where are you, bro? I thought they were gonna give me half from 15. We get zero instead. No more fishes. My next zero is a lot less than 115. It's probably missed the game because it was this fun silver wall we all got to punch. You're lost, I guess. If that ruined our chances, I'm gonna fucking cry. We're still gonna try, but we'll see. Finally, pluck up your courage and ask your beloved to go to the monster prom with you. Oh, prom? I don't know. I like turtles. Okay, what the fuck? Hold up, I'm gonna Google if you could even date Scott, because this feels like a fucking joke. Because, <laughs> what? Oh my god. No. <laughs> I feel so betrayed. I feel so fucking betrayed. <laughs> Fuck. That's not fair. That is so not fair. Why is this so hard? <laughs> so, uh... <laughs> that was... 
this stream of Monster Prom. Um, I'm probably gonna do a video as opposed to a stream when I try and date Scott, and I'm gonna try and like do it there because I don't think anyone wants to watch me do that a third time. <laughs> but um, I definitely want to play more Monster Prom on stream if people want to see more of it. I've had a lot of fun. Um, and I'll probably be doing some more games this week. I've got, um, heckin' God of War on Thursday, because it is Thor's Day. I thought it was more appropriate to do it then than on Mondays. Plus, Monday is kind of a bit of a wild card at the moment. Um, Detroit will be back on Saturday. And I might be adding in a few bonus streams in the next couple weeks, just because I haven't done any bonus streams recently. And I just want to try more random games. And while I'm, there's a lot of games like this where I've started playing them and I've realized I want to play more of it. But if I have it to my schedule, I don't have any wildcard days anymore. So I might be, say, doing more of this on a wildcard day as opposed to a strict stream day. I don't know yet, but I'll put it on my Twitter or something. But I just want to say, if you've come to this, thank you very much for coming by. Shout out to Moss, uh, Liz, and Sunset, who I know have been around. If anyone else has been around, thank you for being here too. Uh, if you haven't followed me already, please do consider hitting that little follow button below. There's also a sub thing that you can do if you want that is not compulsory at all. My little reminder there is if you have Prime, you get one free sub a month. And if you're not using that on anyone else, I would feel privileged if you were willing to give it to me. I don't know. I just feel like I have to remind people about that because I know a lot of people forget to use it. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> thanks for coming by, guys. Um, sorry, that was just me failing at my bisexual cart for a while there. But um, <laughs> yeah, we'll be back soon. As I said, I might do more of this just because I really want to date all the people. I haven't got to go to prom with anyone. I don't know what it's like. So we're, we're going to have to find out. <laughs> uh, Yeah, I don't know. Good night, people. Take care.